Beat the clock is brought to you by Sylvania. For half a century, a quality name in incandescent bulbs, fluorescent tubes and fixtures, photo lamps, radio and television sets, radio and television tubes and electronic devices. Yes, for homes, offices, schools and factories, Sylvania. Let's all play Beat the Clock. And now here is America's number one clock watcher, Bud Kiner! Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, and welcome once again to Beat the Clock, the show where you can have the time of your life playing against time for big-time prizes. Now, if you'll come over here with me, we will have the great pleasure of re-meeting a couple who was with us last week when time ran out. Mr. and Mrs. Brandly. B-R-A-N-D-L-I. That's right. Peculiarly enough, you know, so many different combinations of letters sometimes wind up altogether different than they look. That's true. <laughs> Syllables are not pronounced, and sometimes they are when you don't think they should be. How long have you been married, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Brandley? Was it three years? Yeah. And you have a little boy, I believe, don't you? How old is he? Two years old. Two years old. Can I say hello to him? Sure, you can. Wait a minute now. You look in the camera. This one over here with the red lights. Oh, hiya, Tom. Boy, he's two, you say? Yeah. Two. But he's waving at that screen like yeah. mad there, huh? Or else he's pounding on it. Pounding on the screen, you'll find out when you get home. I imagine which one he did. Incidentally, our bonus stunt is worth $900 in cash tonight. It's really growing up there. Man almost got it last week. He, yeah, he had never seen it or heard the show or watched the show before, but he just kind of got the idea. $900. Whenever that bell happens to ring tonight, that's the person who gets a chance. It might be you or anybody else who happens to be up at our microphone. Mr. and Ms. Brandley, Cambria Heights, did you practice the stunt that we'd started on last? Yes, did. Yes. You did. Well, let's come on over and see how good your practicing worked out. Thank you, Madeline. I see for one thing that you've got uh, rubber sole shoes on. You're taking no chances on that. Is this larger than the balloon you oh, had? Yes. Three oh, is it really? <laughs> oh, my goodness. I didn't realize. I thought you got a good look at that balloon last week. Well, that's we what it was. Largest we could. Did you? Well, even so, I'll give you this much hint about this thing. Uh, the slightest little hit on this, and it goes way up in the air, as you can mm -hmm. see. So you've got to kind of be gentle with it. The harder you hit it, uh, the tougher it's going to be to get it back. Now, what you do, of course, for those who didn't see last week, is to knock all of these three cups off the tables with the balloon. The balloon isn't supposed to hit the table and rock the table, but it must hit the cup and knock it off or roll it off any way that you want to. And, of course, as you remember, you've already got your hands behind your backs. <laughs> That's where you keep more if you want to put them in your pockets. I don't care which you do. Uh, you can touch the balloon with any other part of your body, your head, your feet, anything else. In fact, I advise you to use your feet to keep it from getting on the floor. If it touches the floor at any time before all three cups are knocked off, we'll have to stop and uh, replace one cup. In other words, we'll penalize you one cup. Do you understand? Other than that, you must keep it off the floor until it has knocked off all three of those cups. Take a look over your shoulder now and see once more how many seconds you have. It's 55. Are you ready? Ready. Go. Hands behind your back now. Oh, did it for you. Okay. Get the next one. I'll get Get your foot under it there. Get your foot under it. Keep it up. That's it. Hey, good girl. Good. Come on. Keep it up. Keep it up. That's the boy. Get it over here. One more to go now. One more to go. Good enough, Mr. and Ms. Brantley. Ms. Brantley, I didn't find out what your first name is. Quentin. Quentin. They call you yes. Quent or what? Quentin. Quentin. How about your first name, Ms. Virginia. Brantley? Virginia. Virginia. Virginia and Quentin Brantley live in Cambria Heights. I didn't yes. read that and let everybody know where you are. Well, I will find out what your problem is on the $200 clock right away. Watch. Now, right you are. All right, Mr. and Mrs. Brantley, let's get Mr. Brantley back out here now. Come on, we're ready and wait. Whoa, man. Well, I expect you're smelling a rat already, aren't you? Huh? <laughs> Quint, how about it? Got Some get up, right? That's a good get up, isn't it? Come on over here with me, both of you, and I'll show you what your problem is. On the way over, let me ask you, did you ever play one of those one-armed bandits? Yes. You know, the slot machine? Yes, well, we got one for you here tonight to play. Bring out the one-armed bandit, will you please? These are the one-armed bandit's helpers. That's, that's why he's got one arm, you understand? <laughs> you step over there to Madeline. She'll, uh, she's got a little something for you to put on your head to keep that long hair of yours out of your eyes. Thank you very much, Betty. <laughs> This, of course, it represents a wooden nickel. Now, if you'll step up alongside of me just temporarily here, I'll show you what the story is, and Quent can be watching, too. We have here a very special one-armed bandit machine. Now, I'll pull this little handle, and you watch up there and see what happens, Quent. Can you see up there? Stand up if you want to see. Look at that. Now, what happened? What came up there? You've got a combination of two whipped cream pies and a container of Ready Whip. 
And this machine delivers in person everything that, <laughs> that comes up in that combination up there. Now, the next time I push the handle down, the machine is going to go out of whack and just keep delivering every combination that comes up there to your husband, who will be seated right there on that stool, if you don't mind again, Quint. Just sit right down, facing this way. No, right along. Don't move the stool. That's it. Stay right there. That's it. That's where you sit. Now, you've got to stop the machine. And the way you do it is to put this wooden nickel in the slot, which is in the top right there. See? There's a, right, right there in the top, there's a slot for the wooden nickel. But you can't see that slot. You've got to stand right down here and use this long pole with this on the end and just maneuver it around until it drops down in the slot. Now, the slot is lengthwise this way. Do you understand? And it starts right about there. That's about where it starts and runs on down from there. You have to stay down there. As soon as you put it in there, it will stop and you'll beat the clock. No, you better stay just about where you are. Take a look at the clock, see how many seconds you have. 40 seconds in which to stop it. I'll start it. Are you ready? Go. of that. <laughs> All right, good enough. You beat the clock on that. And now it becomes your turn, Mrs. Brandley, to try for our jackpot clock. So if you'll step right up on the far end of this little platform, turn around and face the audience. In back of this curtain, in back of you, is our famous jackpot board with all of the words of a famous saying or quotation all mixed up. You've got to unmix them. Get them around so they spell the saying or quotation we're after in 20 seconds, okay? Now don't turn around till I tell you to. Open the curtain. Turn around, take a look. Go. started to say a penny earned is a penny saved that would have been just the wrong way and that that much difference could have made the difference to you but it hasn't so let's see what you've done now you have beaten our jackpot clock let's see what you've won mr. And mrs. Brandley your prize is Sylvania's exquisite console the Montclair with genuine hand rubbed mahogany inlay doors large 21 inch movie clear television with surrounding halo light for the greatest viewing comfort in all television the Montclair is outstanding in performance and design Congratulations, Mr. and Mrs. Brandley. You have just won Sylvania's jackpot prize. My congratulations to you, sir. Another happy hour of using your new Sylvania television. Good night. You'll find your husband backstage. Hi, Roxanne. Who do we have now? A pretty lady sticking her tongue out at me. What's that for, you suppose? Huh? Did she stick her she tongue out? She did. She's walked out here with her tongue sticking out. Now, why do you suppose that was? Well, I don't know. Well, I think what what are their names? Uh, Mr. and Mrs. John Hopkins from Baltimore, Maryland. Oh, I've been in your hospital down there. Very. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Hopkins. How are you? John, how are you, sir? Fine. What do you do for a living? I'm a lamp application engineer. A lamp application engineer. Do you mind if I ask uh, what that means? I, I'm ignorant on that. What, well, what? Uh, lighting, uh, selling light bulbs. Well, when you say application, what, what does that mean? I well, don't know what that means. the application of lighting. Oh, to the home and to the uh, factory and that sort of thing is what you mean? How, it's use, in other words. How long have you been married, Mrs. Hopkins? Almost two years. Do you have any little lamps running around the house? Not yet. Not yet. Well, I hope you're having a good time up here in New York City, and I hope maybe your remembrance of this visit will be, uh, hey, did you get that out of the same material, those two suits? This was the, we had this uh, for our honeymoon when we came. Well, isn't that right nice, made of the same material. Boy, how one can you be in a marriage? I think that's fine. Well, now we're going to see just exactly how many things you've learned. Uh, notably, uh, I don't know how you have to carry your own bags when you're traveling anywhere, but let's see how well you can carry a bag. Come over here, Mrs. Hopkins. John, you stand there and just watch and see how well your wife does. Thank you very much, Betty. Now here, if you'll notice on the stage, on the floor, there are a number of little rubber balls, you see? There are 10 of them in all. Now what I want you to do is to hold this satchel. This is one of those zip-up cases, you see, like this. Hold it in, in your left hand and with your right hand. You can just hold it like this. Just take the balls up one at a time, put them in there or in here, I don't care, until you've got all 10 balls inside the bag. You understand? Yeah. In how many seconds? Take a look and see. 55 seconds. The fascinating thing about this bag is the bottom of it. Take a look. 
can see it has a couple of holes in it there. And uh, if you just hold that bag and be real careful about it, you know, you can uh, just see what happens. You might very well wind up with all 10 balls. If you do, within 55 seconds, we'll stop the clock. You'll beat the clock. Now, you may not set the bag down on the floor at any time. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. Go. You're supposed to hold it by the handle and not by the edge of the bag, see? Now, I'm afraid we'll have to put a couple of those out on the floor here. We just have to put the last two out on the floor. That's a very good idea there. You were doing fine, yeah. All right, now, you ready to start from there? Go. You're still doing all right, honey. Keep it up. Keep it up. All right, stop the clock. Nice to <laughs> okay, <laughs> trying now for the two hundred dollar clock. <laughs> oh, I want to tell you. Say, by the way, I'd like to uh, remind you, folks. I know perfectly well that at any time of your life these days, you're badgered from pillar to post by this campaign or that campaign to raise funds for this, that, or the other thing. Some of these, of course, are deserving of particular mention. You know how close they've come to success in the polio research. They're also coming closer and closer to the proper treatment of heart conditions. Heart, you know, heart disease, one of the greatest killers of all. And they're having a campaign again now to raise funds. And these funds are, of course, used for continuing research to help to alleviate the heart conditions that in this, the pace of this world we live in is so rough on everybody today. So if you haven't already sent, send a contribution, all of you folks, to H-E-A-R-T, Heart, in care of your local postmaster, if you will. Don't forget, it's a very important thing. Okay, Mr. and Ms. John Hopkins, that moves you up now to the $200 clock. And since we made your wife work on the first one, John, I'm going to make you work on this one. Will you come over here with me? Thank you very much. Are you right-handed or left-handed? Right-handed. Right-handed, all right. Then we're going to give you a right-handed glove. That's it. Put it on your right hand. Thank you, Madeline. Now, if you'll stand right alongside of me here, I'll show you exactly why we put rubbers on your feet and why we put the glove on your hand. Now, when I say go, let me show you what's going to happen on these two slides. Look, I'll go over here and say go. Watch. Go. See there? Saucer comes out, and immediately from over here comes another saucer, you see? Now, you may not catch them the way I caught them. You have to catch them underneath like that. You can't hold the dishes like that, but like underneath. You can grip that bottom dish if you want. Now, having caught the one, you come back over here to this one and catch one on top of it. Then back over here, catch another on top of that. Back over here and catch another on top of that. When you have four dishes stacked up, having gone from one to the other constantly back and forth, can't just wait at one, we'll stop the clock and you'll beat the clock. Now, if they break or fall, forget them. Go back and get another one and start all over again. Do you understand? Yes. Okay, take a look and see how many seconds you have. 40 seconds. Now, I wanted to give you one more regulation. You work in this area here. The only purpose of that is to protect you because the dishes will go out that way and we don't want you stepping on any of them and slipping. You understand? Mm -hmm. So you stay on this side in this, this general area in here. All right, you better get over by that one for it to start. Are you ready? Go! Okay, Mr. Ms. Hopkins, you've beaten the $200 clock, and that means now it's your turn to try for the jackpot clock. So if you'll step back up here, John, you have to step over there and don't help her in any way, if you don't mind. Just hold good thoughts about her. And back of this curtain is our jackpot board with all the words of that famous saying or quotation all mixed up. Unmix them. Get them straight in 20 seconds from the time I say go. Don't turn around like I tell you to, please. Open the curtain. Turn around, take a look. Go. Try to recognize the saying first, then do it. All right, go ahead, don't worry about it. I'll put it back for you. I know where you had it. No, 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 no. It's almost right. Oh, golly, I'm sorry. It's just that this one should have been up here. Uneasy lies the head that wears a crown is what it should have been. But John and Mrs. Hopkins, come on back in here because you've beaten our $200 clock. So let's see what you've won. A glamorous carpet from the looms of Mohawk. It's the top fashion Grosvenor design with a third dimensional effect, which is distinctive with Mohawk for carpet beauty in any room of your home. 
Congratulations, Mr. and Mrs. Hopkins. You have just won a Beat the Clock prize worth more than $200. My congratulations to you. Roxanne, whom do we have now? But our next contestants are Mr. and Mrs. David Subtelny from Springfield, Massachusetts. Thank you very much, Roxanne. Mr. and Mrs. Subtelny, how are you? It's not David, it's Daniel, isn't it? Daniel. Daniel, as I guess they call him, Mrs. Subtelny. And that's a very interesting. S-U-B-T-E-L-N-Y, Subtelny. I wonder what the history of that name is. Oh, it's got Russian origin. It has Russian origin, has it? What do you do in Springfield? Hey, the bonus! You get to try the bonus. Have you ever seen it? No. You haven't. Well, come on over here, Dan. Bring out the bonus. This is worth $900 in cash in addition to anything else you may win tonight. Thank you, Madeline Betty. Those ping pong balls are heavy. That's why the two of them have to bring it out. Now, here we are. Here are the same two ping pong balls that have been hanging here week after week. And here are pipes, which incidentally somebody said to us, you know, they said, do you ever change those pipes? What we do is to rewrap the bit each time with fresh, clean tape so you don't have to worry about it. Now, what happens is this. You can catch these ping pong balls, one in each of these two bowls, you see, and they'll come fairly close together. The whole point of this is that you do the same thing that I just did, but you hold the pipes in your mouth. You see? Now, you take them from me, put them in your mouth any way you want to. Meantime, I'll take a look at the clock, see how many seconds you have. 40 seconds, you catch one in each uh, of the two bowls. At the same time, we'll stop the clock and you'll beat the clock. You can't touch them with your hands or use your hands in any way. Well, could you stop it? Can I stop? You want to stop them swinging? Certainly be glad to. Okay, are you ready? Yeah. See if that's still now. That, that's about as much as I can steady it. Right. Go! But that was strictly in the sense of a bonus. You've lost nothing by it. You just stood the game, that's all. And that will be worth $1,000 in cash next week. That has run the longest of any bonus we have ever had. Well, Dan, that's uh, all right now, boy. You can just relax and calm down. We'll find out what your problem is on the one hundred clock in just a minute. All right, Mr. and Mrs. Subtelny, we feel that there is a frustrated, frustrated musician inside of every one of us. So we're going to bring it out of you. Whatever music is hidden within you, we'll find out. Do you play a musical instrument, Mrs.? Do you? No. You don't, Dan? Well, come on over here with me now. We'll see just how, how well you... Dan, you have a seat there, if you will. Mrs. Subtelny, will you come over here with me? And have a seat on this stool facing the audience. Dan is going to face you. You face the audience, however. There's a very definite reason for that. Thank you very much. Now, here we have a violin, although it's a little different from any violin you've ever seen. Number one, we have trapped the, uh, the strings under there, so you don't have to worry about the bow coming off, you see. And at the end of this bow, see what we fastened? A little sharp needle. Mm -hmm. There's a reason for that. You can see the balloons over there. Obviously, needles and balloons mean bang, bang. You're going to break all the balloons. Now, if you will put this under your chin, you know how to hold a fiddle? That's the idea. Take a hold of the fiddle bow and start bowing pretty much in the direction of those balloons, you see, and play. Actually, try to make some sound come out. Go ahead. Let me hear something. All right. All right. Okay. <laughs> That's all right. I don't worry about the string. We just uh, break that off. Now, meantime, how are they going to get close enough to that needle? That's your husband's job. Now, Dan, I want you to play a little slip horn for us here, if you will. Okay. Now, you take a hold of that uh, with your thumb around through here, there, and these fingers down around there. That holds that together. This is the slip horn part of it, you see? Put it up against your mouth and blow good and loud and see what you get out of it. Oh! All right, boy. No, you're doing fine. That's exactly the way I want you to do. And I want you to keep blowing, keep playing, keep slipping that horn out and knocking those balloons one at a time over towards your wife. Meantime, you keep playing, too. Got to have music from your side and break those balloons. When you got them all broken, we'll stop the clock and you'll beat the clock. Take a look at the clock. See how many seconds. 35. That's what I want you to hit them with. That's it. Okay, boy. You ready? You ready? Go. A little music. A little music, missus. Come on. A little music. A little music. That's it. Hi, 
my goodness, you were aiming that fiddle bowl like I don't know what. Looked like you were taking off with a jet propeller. Oh, I'm caught here, am I not? All right, we'll just get that out of the way right now. Scared you, didn't I, fellas, huh? Hey, Fitz, I scared you, didn't I, huh? Yeah, I scared you that boy. All right. Now we have a little category for the two of you. Which Did you ever roll a hoop when you were a little girl? No. The only thing you know about hoops now is hoop skirts. Yeah. Yeah, but I've heard, I've heard tell that there was a time when girls rolled hoops. I don't remember it myself. He said. All right, now, Dan and Mrs., come on over here with me. We'll find a different stage than we did a minute ago. Thank you. Now, Mrs. Subtally, uh, uh, rather, Dave, I want you to, uh, Dan, rather, would you stand in back of that black line there, see it? And you must operate and start this hoop from behind that black line. And you, Mrs. Subtelli, must start the hoop from in back of this black line. Now, you can move back and sideways, you know, or back as far as you want to, but you must always start from the back of this black line. Notice the four little duck pins there. You roll the hoop to Dan and try to knock down one of those duck pins. I don't care which one. Dan will roll it back to you and try to knock one down on the return trip. Keep rolling the hoop back and forth until you have knocked down all four duck pins. In how many seconds? Take a look. 55 seconds. And always start it. Big part. You catch it when it comes to you. That's right. And roll it right back. Don't waste any time. Are you ready? Go. <laughs> Better take two hands to it, I think, Mr. Pelling, so you can kind of guide it a little bit. See like he's doing? Even a little bit. <laughs> Why, well, sure will. Oh, boy, you just missed that one. Oh, take steady aim there, Dan. Still got 26 seconds. Come on. Yep, we're going down. There's one. All right, now come on. You still do it. You got 19 seconds. Two. Come on, Dan. Almost. Come on. Amen. Ten seconds. Oh, oh, just missed. Quick, hurry up. Come on, Dan. Oh, golly, I'm sorry you didn't beat the clock. The clock beat you, but you did very well anyway. Come on, Mr. Subtelli. Betty will take that. You come back over with Dan because you've beaten our $100 clock. So let's take a look and see what you've won. Just take a look over here. From the Michael C. Fina Company of New York City, six sterling silver play settings in the distinctive Chateau Rose pattern, all conveniently arranged in a tarnish-proof chest. Congratulations, Mr. and Mrs. Subtelny. You have just won a beat-the-clock prize worth more than $100. Right, congratulations to you, too. I'm so happy to see the prize you won. Good night, Dan. Night, Mr. Subtelny. Roxanne, who do we have now? But we have Mr. and Mrs. Joseph Saunders from Greenhaven, New York. Well, hi, Mr. and Mrs. Saunders. How are you? I'm glad to Nice to have you here. Joe, how are you, boy? Right, what do you do for a living? Prison guard. You're a... Prison guard, you're out on a little good, good behavior time. <laughs> You've been married eight years, I see, and have two yes. children. Yes. Well, I bet you told them that if you got on the show, yes. you'd wait. You'd go right ahead. Wave right into that camp. Tommy and Kirk. Tommy and Kirk, two boys, yes. huh? Uh huh? All right, let's let Tommy and Kirk see how well-balanced parents they have. Will you both come over here with me, please? Okay. Now, I'm going to ask you, Miss Kirk, if you will, or Mrs. Sanders, rather, to step up on... Take your shoes off. Do you mind? I think you better take yours off, too, Joe. Do you mind terribly? I just don't want you to step on your wife's pretty feet. Step right up on that little hassock there. I'll kind of balance you till your husband gets up. But I want you to stand as near this edge as you can because he's got to get on there, too. Oh. Yeah. Get up facing your wife now. Facing her. Facing her. Get right so your feet, you know, you can straddle if you want to, but that's the idea. Okay. Now, get, get balanced. Get balanced. The reason I say get balanced is because in just a minute, I'm going to ask you to let go of each other and clasp your hands behind your heads. Can you do it? So you can stand that way now. You do it? All right, let go. Put your hands behind your heads. No, no, your head, not his head. Now, when I say go, when I, let go now, let go. Get your hands behind your head. When I say go, keeping your hands behind your heads, I want you to turn completely around so you're standing back to back. Five seconds. Are you ready? Go. If you fall off, you'll have to start all over again. Put your hands behind your head. Hands behind your head. Raise that elbow up in the air. That's it. Careful. Careful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold it. All right. Hold it. Turn around. Face him again. Got to go through that all again. Come on. That's it. Get yourself balanced. Get yourself balanced. You still have 34 seconds. Oh, hey. Our time has run out. How about it now, Mr. and Miss Sanders? Can you come back next week? 
right. Can you really? You can get time off from the, the prison up there? Good enough. If you have a hassock, you can practice this. That'll be the stunt you'll start next week. We'll see you then, and good luck to you at that time, Joe. Okay. And now, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget that heart fund. As we said to you before, it's an awfully important one. If you haven't sent in your contribution yet, do it now. H-E-A-R-T, care of your local postmaster. Now, this is Bud Collier speaking for Sylvania, hoping that next time may be your time to beat the clock. Good night, everybody. is brought to you by Sylvania. This is Vern Bennett reminding you to tune in every week at the same time for Beat the Clock.